part of the challenge is a cultural change, that people in the various communi communities across the state of Tennessee have to culturally accept that an education is a critical and essential part of their child's development. And failure to do that will leave that child at a disadvantage against those that uh, have attained certain levels of education. And if you're a free market theorist, the free market's demanding that. Employers want better educated, critical thinking employees from all levels of the economic strata. They want employees who can problem solve. They want employees who can critically think. And the education system is the way that you get people to that level. So uh, we've got to culturally accept the fact that that is a reality in today's working uh, environment. The, the days of you know, dropping out in the eighth grade and going to work in a manual labor job, uh, the technology and transportation are just taking those days away from us. I mean, everything's technologically driven, and people who uh, graduate from high school today uh, have to be able to work in an environment that 50 years ago uh, workers couldn't even have imagined. Is that is that much is it that much of a problem that, that, that communities or or there's a, a, a societal perspective or understanding that education is not that important? Well, you call it a problem, I'd call it an opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to uh, elevate uh, the educational level of our systems. But the challenge is that in some <clears throat> communities where uh, people don't view education as, as important as other communities do, but every study that I'm aware of demonstrates that if you want to move people from one economic level to another, the one way you do that is through education. What about curriculum choices? Well, curriculum is important, and curriculum is evolving. It, you know, curriculum changes over time with the demands of society, and uh, you're going to hear a lot of discussion across the, the state of Tennessee about science and uh, technology, because the world that uh, we're moving into with all the technological advancements, uh, the market is demanding people with math skills, people with science skills, and so We've even uh, focused on creating uh, learning centers where we just focus on uh, science and math and technology. And these, uh, what are called STEM centers, uh, are really trying to focus in on kids' uh, attention to uh, the basic sciences and mathematics because they have become an integral part. I mean, I'm sitting in this radio station with you and I'm looking around and look at all the technology that is yeah, around us. Exactly. And you simply, it's just difficult to function. A computer for my son, who is 24, a computer for him uh, is just another tool. We looked at it when it came along as some kind of novelty. <laughs> to him, it's, it's a tool that he uses in his day-to-day -day life, and that's the world that our children are moving into. It's, it's different than the world that our parents experienced, and it's different than the world that, that you and I grew up in. Math and science, is, as I think it is, is the, the biggest direction. It may be the biggest, uh, the biggest lacking that we had in school. Well, the, the challenge there is, and this goes back to uh, great students have great teachers, uh, we've got to better equip math and science teachers to be able to communicate the information more effectively to their students. For some reason, uh, in this country, particularly in this state, people have a real phobia about math and yes. science and I think it's the way we've presented the material to the students and so that's why again we have made a special emphasis to say we've got to raise the bar for our teachers because like I've said great students have great teachers. Community involvement in local schools? All, always important. You cannot get away from uh, the root of government and that is the family uh, that families have to engage themselves in their child's education. The, the, uh, we're, we're, we're having a conversation today with Senator Bo Watson. Right now we're talking about education and that has that as a priority in our state, in our local, in our Chattanooga area, in Hamilton County. And it's going to impact our growth, our movement into the future. Oh, no question. Uh, you know, I tell you, the southeast is really poised for some economic growth and Tennessee uh, sits at the door of the south. Uh, we are the about to be re reestablish ourselves as the Dynamo of Dixie. It is so exciting how much we've got coming on, and it's not just.
Volkswagen. No, it's not just Volkswagen, and and and, and it's not just smoke and mirrors. Uh, you know, politicians oftentimes are really good at, at, <laughs> at, at creating a, Don't say an it, environment please. that doesn't really exist. I I'm telling you that uh, we have a great opportunity before us in this state and in this area of the state, but the community has to make a conscious decision to pursue that opportunity. And there's going to be a lot of discussion over the next couple of years about whether we want to, what we want to achieve here, because we have our own destiny truly in our hands. We're in a transition in the United States. We're in a transition in where business is shifting, and we are a transition stage in this state and in this part of the state of do we want to be left standing at the train station, or are we ready to get on the train and ride out of town? Because it's well, a great chance. It, the world has seen Chattanooga, and they like what they see so far. No question about that. Chattanooga, now this, I, I, I will fully profess that I am very biased. I was born and raised here, went to school here, went to the university here, so I am a Hamilton County uh, fan. Uh, but we have uh, so positioned ourselves, both as a state and as a region, that uh, the country and the world really is looking at this area as a, a place where it's a good place to do business.